Amigos, welcome to another After Effects tutorial. Today we'll be creating a sports promo. And if you've been following me the last several years, you know that I've been working for Thursday Night Football, the Super Bowl, for the NFL Network. So today we're creating a sports promo. You can easily use any other sports if you like. And before anything else, shout out to Aperture for providing today's lights. Today's tutorial is exciting because today is the first time that we're offering this After Effects template for sale. So it's in the description below. Click on the link if you're interested. And not only will it include the After Effects project with the high quality background images and the stock footage, which you can also reuse for any of your projects. For today's tutorial, we'll go over how I built this sports promo and then we'll dive deeper into the camera move. I know some of you have asked, hey CM, how to create your camera moves for your After Effects projects. So we'll go step by step and show you how I created this camera move for this sports promo. If you enjoy this video, please give us some love and support. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and remember that life is truly a gift. So make it count. The key into building this sports promo is to build each player in its very own composition and then have one master composition where we composite those comps and then we add the camera move. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you an overview of what I did for each of these compositions for the player, for the matchup, and then I'll show you how to create that camera move. So let's go to graphics player one. I'm gonna switch it to custom view one and what I'll do is I'll simply orbit and notice that we have 2D layers in 3D space. And if we look at the timeline, it's only five layers. And let's go through each of those five layers. Let's go to the logo. I'm gonna solo this layer. And this logo, all I'm doing is scaling up the logo. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the QB. And for this one, we're sliding up the quarterback from the bottom. And at the same time, we're scaling Dak Prescott. And notice that the anchor point is set to the bottom. So when we scale him up, it's scaling up from the bottom. Next, for the team name, very simple. Keyframes for the position, and we're sliding in from the left side. We have a smoke layer. This is some stock footage that I have. And it's white, but I added a gradient ram and changed the colors to give it more of a team color, more of the Dallas Cowboys team colors. And lastly, we have another stock footage. It sparks. And again, I added a tint to give it more of a team color. And I added a glow. And pretty much for this one, I just dropped down the threshold all the way down to 25. And that is it. And for Tom Brady... It's the same thing. The difference is that the team name slides in from the right side and I switched up the smoke and the sparks. Had a different stock footage, just swapped it to give it a little bit of variation. Okay, let's go to the graphics matchup and let's go to custom view one. Let me rotate. And you can see that these are 2D layers in 3D space. And let's go through each one. Let's go to the logo. The logo, again, it's simple. We just added keyframes for the scale, and it's simply scaling up. Let's go to the quarterbacks. And very simple, just sliding them in from the bottom. And I added a smoke, the same smoke layer, and just change the colors. You can see the gradient ramp and the different colors that I used. And I had sparks and some text. Okay, once you have these three different comps, then we go to our master composition. We're gonna composite our player one, our player two, and our matchup. Let me switch it to custom view one. Now, when you bring these layers in, they're going to be flat like this. And once we make them 3D, they're going to be flat. And if we rotate, notice that they're flat, even though if we go to each one, 
we place all of these layers in different Z space. What we need to do is we need to tell After Effects, hey After Effects, we want to bring back all of those layers in its own Z space. So what we need to do is collapse transformation. And this little gear star icon is collapse transformation. So we select our layers, click on this icon, and it brings back all of these layers in its own Z space. It's a great way to work. And the next thing that I did was I added the backgrounds. And the background is just a huge image, like 5,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels. You can see our Stadium 1. And if I go to our project images, you can see just a very big image. And simply place them way back in Z space, 1,000 pixels in Z space. If I rotate this, you can see that just all the way in the back and here all the way in the back as well. Okay, now let's go to the camera move and I'm gonna switch it to front view. I'm gonna pull back and for the camera, this is our camera and it's going from point A, which is the Dallas Cowboys, to B, which is the Patriots, all the way down to C, which is our matchup. So it'll go, it goes from here to here to here. Let's play it back so you can see. And I also added some keyframes for the rotation and I added a wiggle so it'll flow in 3D space. So let me show you how to do that. I'm gonna switch it to our active camera. Let's go back to the beginning and let's delete these two layers. Go to layer, new camera, choose the 50 millimeter preset Let's right click on the camera, go to camera, create orbit null. Now what this does is it creates a null object and it parents the camera to that null object. Now I'm gonna use this null object to move the camera and to rotate the camera as well. So what I'm gonna do is at 112, let's go to 112, go to the position and let's click on the stopwatch to add a keyframe. And let's jump to two seconds. And let's adjust the value on the X axis to move it right here. So we're going to make it 3750. So let's play it back so you can see what we're doing. That's it. We're going from Cowboys to Patriots. Now let's go to 312. Let's add a keyframe. And then let's go to four seconds. Let's go to four seconds and let's adjust the value on the Y axis. Move it down. Perfect. This is what we have. Now, select your keyframes, right click, go to keyframe interpolation, and just make sure that your spatial interpolation is set to linear. And we can also select the keyframes, hit F9 for easy ease to smooth out the movement. Let's check it out. Perfect. Now the next thing that I did was I added keyframes for the rotation, for the X rotation and for the Y rotation. Let's make this minus eight. Actually, let's make it minus seven. Let's go all the way to zero, zero. Let's add keyframes and we'll go all the way before we move to our last comp. So here at 312, Let's make this, we can make this eight, and this one we can make it seven. So let's see what we have. And then down here, we can reset it. We can reset it to zero, zero, so it's facing towards us. And then we can give it some movement. For the Y rotation, we can move it a little bit, maybe 10. So let's check it out. Now these values, feel free to change these values. You don't have to make it five. You can make this zero if you want. You can make this minus 10. Just feel free to experiment, see which values you like to give the movement that you want. 
It doesn't have to be these exact values, but I'm giving you a good starting point to take off. Okay, the last thing is we want to add a little bit of camera shake or a little bit just making the camera flow in 3D space. And to do that, I added a wiggle to the position. We'll add a simple expression. I'll click on the stopwatch and I'll type in wiggle. And wiggle takes two parameters. The first one tells it how many times do you want to wiggle per second. And the second parameter is how much do you want to wiggle, how many pixels. So what we'll do is we'll put it an extreme low number, 0.5, which is very little, comma, and then the second parameter, like I mentioned, is how many times do you want to wiggle. We'll put in a high value, like 50. So let's go back and let's check it out. Okay. Now notice if I make this a high value instead of 0.5, let's make, let's see if I make it five. Notice the difference. See, now I'm creating that camera shake, the camera shake that you saw, that's how I created that camera shake. But I obviously I keyframe this and the way to keyframe it is very simple. Select the null object, go to effect, go to expression controls and go to slider control and let's add another one. The first one, let's call it frequency. And this one, uh, we misspelled it, frequency. And this one, amount. So instead of using these two values that we hard coded, we'll be using whatever we specify through these sliders. So the easiest way to do it is we'll use the pick whip. So for the first one, click on the pick whip. Let's point it to this slider for the frequency. You can see that After Effects provided the code for us. Type in comma. And then now we want the slider for the amount. So using the pick whip, let's point to the slider. And again, After Effects generated the code for us. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to close this expression. Let's add a parenthesis and let's click outside here. Okay. Now it's not doing anything and that's because all of these parameters are at zero. Now what we can do is since these parameters have stopwatch, we can keyframe this. So what we can do is we can make this 0.5, for example, and this 50. Now we have it floating. And what we can do is to create that movement, that shake, we can keyframe this. For example, for the slider, let's add a keyframe. And then for the next one, we can make it, for example, let's say two. And let's move forward and then let's make it back to 0.5. So let's see. Actually, this needs a little bit more. So let's go to, let's make it three. Let's check it out. So you can see that we, we are controlling the camera shake using these sliders. And then this one, we can add an easy ease in. And then feel free to experiment with all of these values. You can also add keyframes for the amount, but this is how I created that camera bump, that camera shake for each of these comps. That's it, amigos. Hopefully this gives you a great overview on how to build this sports promo. It's actually not that difficult once you understand the basic foundation of using comps, using the collapse transformation, and then your master comp, you're adding the camera move and any other final details that you need.